We climbed down the ledge and began to walk east. In no time at all, it was so dark, it was as if a curtain was in front of my eyes. The fog was like an impenetrable barrier. I had never realized how crippling the fog was at night. I could not conceive how Don Juan walked. I held onto his arm as if I were blind. Somehow I had the feeling I was walking on the edge of a precipice. My legs refused to move on. My reason trusted Don Juan, and I was rationally willing to go on, but my body was not, and Don Juan had to drag me in total darkness. He must have known the terrain to ultimate perfection. He stopped at a certain point and made me sit down. I did not dare let go of his arm. Don Juan suddenly moved away from me, and without the support of his body, I fell to the ground. Touching the ground restored my sense of equilibrium. I was lying on a flat area. I began to assess my immediate surroundings by touch. I recognized dry leaves and twigs. There was a sudden flash of lightning that illuminated the whole area and tremendous thunder. I saw Don Juan standing to my left. I saw huge trees and a cave a few feet behind him. The brilliancy of the lightning gave me an idea of how thick the bank of fog was. I noticed the trunks of enormous trees as dark silhouettes against the opaque, light gray mass of the fog. Don Juan whispered that the fog and lightning were in cahoots with each other, and I had to keep an exhausting vigil because I was engaged in a battle of power. At that moment, a stupendous flash of lightning rendered the whole scene phantasmagorical. There were so many flashes of lightning, I could not keep track of where they were coming from. The scenery, however, had been so profusely illuminated, I felt much more at ease. Then it began to rain. I pressed my back against the rock as far as I could. My hat served as a good protection. I was sitting with my knees to my chest, and only my calves and shoes got wet. It rained for a long time. The rain was lukewarm. I felt it on my feet. And then I fell asleep. The noises of birds woke me up. I looked around for Don Juan. He was not there. Ordinarily, I would have wondered whether he had left me alone there, but the shock of seeing the surroundings nearly paralyzed me. I experienced a moment of unparalleled confusion. I was standing on a flat piece of land between two small dirt hills covered with bushes. There were no trees, and where I had seen a path in the forest, there was a gigantic bush. I refused to believe what I was witnessing. The incongruency of my two versions of reality made me grapple for any kind of explanation. I called Don Juan a couple of times, and then I had an attack of anxiety and bellowed his name as loud as I could. He came out from behind some bushes. I immediately became aware that he knew what was going on. His smile was so mischievous, I ended up smiling myself. I didn't know where to begin. There were so many things I wanted to ask. He seemed to be aware of my mood and laughed with sheer delight. How do you feel? I didn't want to say anything. I was still upset. Don Juan urged me to sit down on a flat rock and said the stone was a power object and that I would be renewed after being there for a while. Sit down, he commanded me dryly. He did not smile. His eyes were piercing. I automatically sat down. He said that I was being careless with power by acting morosely and that I had to put an end to it or power would turn against both of us and we would never leave those desolate hills alive. Last night... You had an encounter with power. The fog, the darkness, the lightning, the thunder, and the rain were all part of the great battle of power. You had the luck of a fool. A warrior would give anything to have such a battle. My argument was that the whole event could not be a battle of power because it hadn't been real. And what is real? This, what we're looking at, is real, I said, pointing to the surroundings. But so was the bridge you saw last night, and so was the forest and everything else. But if they were real, where are they now? They are here. If you had enough power, you could call them back. Right now, you cannot do that, because you think it's helpful to keep on doubting and nagging. It isn't, my friend. It isn't. There are worlds upon worlds right here in front of us. 